Hi, I'm Ian. And I'm Jason. And this is Ghosts and Bears, the only podcast where we bring you the actual ghost stories with the actual history in the actual place. This episode, we're off to Mola Cemetery, which is usually not quite so haunted, but this one's a little bit different. Ross Bay Cemetery on the coast of Vancouver Island, a place of a lot of spirits and a lot of ghosts coming up on Ghosts and Bears. So welcome. Welcome. Uh, We are back with a new and exciting episode of Ghosts and Bears. We're going to be looking at the Ross Bay Cemetery. Cemeteries. They're everywhere, aren't they? (laughs) Now, have you ever had any weird um, experiences in Ross Bay? Like, have you ever gone there? Uh, Yeah, I've been there a few times. And I've never really felt all that comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's save that. Uh, let's talk about what's going on right now. What what has been happening for us? Because we have our dog now. Yeah. And update on him. He is getting shaved today. <laughs> yeah, I call him a burr ball. <laughs> he it turns out, unbeknownst to us, we have burrs in our backyard. And a lot of them. And a lot of them. And he is basically, yeah, a burr ball. So um, he's going in to get completely shaved down to the wood. We will be posting before and after pictures on social <laughs> yeah. media so you can see. Uh, but on the whole, uh, we had a bit of a surprise last week. We went up to visit your mom. Mm-hmm. And what happened? Oh, well, a lot. Uh, We got to get Randy back was the biggest thing. Randy is back with us. He is running the house as normal. But the biggest surprise was how I didn't know how the dog and Randy were going to do. Yeah, within 48 hours, they settled into just a normal life. I mean, it was a bit like, you know, on the movie Aliens where Sigourney Weaver is pressed up against the wall and the alien is looking for her. That's a bit like Randy. Randy was the alien. Randy is the alien in the scenario. That was Randy and and, and Moby for sure. Um, Randy, anytime Randy comes near Moby just freezes. <laughs> yeah. Or turns his head away. It's yeah. Just, it's so funny psychologically He's like, for it's, both. It's, it's like, not it's happening. If, it's not happening. It's as if happening. they turn their head away in their completely different space. Yeah. It's interesting. But yeah, Randy, it's nice for Randy to be back. Um, he had a bit of an adjustment period where we were going to kill him at three o'clock in the morning, but uh, he's doing well now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess, uh, yeah, he would just start meowing. So that kind of woke us up. <laughs> it woke us up the first night, but he quickly remembered how things run around here and he was actually really good. So um, yeah, it all worked out. Typical Randy. Typical Randy. Exactly. Typical and mom will be coming back soon. And yeah, we're bringing back the old woman. So yeah. that will be fun. Yeah, she did us a big favor by by moving into and occupying our one apartment. So yep. that's cool. Yeah. And so she'll be back soon. And with her will come Rex. So Rex, Rex will be back Randy. soon. It'll be Rex, Randy, and Moby. Various fish tanks and button quail. It's just a little farm. It's a farm. We and just need a monkey or something. No, I want goats. I want little big oh, right. pygmy goats oh, to mow the lawn. Well, that's fair. Natural lawn mowing. Natural and fertilization. Yes. Circle of life. <laughs> yeah. Why we don't? Why more people just don't have pygmy goats is beyond me. Um, you'll probably hear Randy in the background. There's nothing we can do about that. Yeah, he's just he's being a Siamese. Vocal. He's unstoppable. Um, also, when we were up island, uh, we went out to our place in Port Alice, and it looks good. Yeah, it was um, nice. And it's so nice to go back to being in Port Alice and just being there and feeling it. And it's just so beautiful. And we went down a, a, a logging road that we eventually turned around on. Yeah. And we, <clears throat> we brought the Vens on the road. The Venza. It was... It was amazing. We we went nearly as far as the old FJ went, and but uh, it started getting well. The road basically just disappeared. Yeah, <laughs> so I think I guess we we found the edge of whatever that was, which was, which was interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm glad we went, but I'm also glad we turned around when we did because yeah, it wasn't a good uh, 
a good thing to get stuck on the side of a mountain while the dust is falling <laughs> and the cougars and bears are coming out. Yeah, but we t- we found a spot we were able to turn around, and we as we turned around and a few clicks back. We saw a guy on a, whatchamacallit? Oh, one of those uh, razors, the four-wheel ATV things. Yeah. Yeah. And he looked at us like, what the heck are you doing up here? <laughs> it was pretty funny. It's funny. Venza on the same road as, as an off-road vehicle. And um, as an update, uh, we have um, the Port Alice Mill that we did, I think, episode number three mm-hmm. was Port Alice Mill. It's coming down quick. Yeah. Um, it's probably half down now. Maybe maybe forty percent down. Yes, uh, but they've taken down the big oil drums, so you can see the old graveyard now on the side of the hill. Yeah, by the only golf course that's on the side of a hill. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks it looks pretty wild. It's uh, really coming down quick. And as the mill comes down, it's interesting because what they're doing is they're really turning the town into more of a. Um, Oh, what do you call it? More of a tourist destination. So there's like a, you can rent kayaks there now. And, and there's a, a new restaurant in town and all these other things. So Yeah, it's fabulous. It's really cool to see. Really cool to see. We are talking today um, about Ross Bay Cemetery. And a lot of people think Ross Bay is the uh, oldest cemetery in Victoria. But it's not. It's actually cemetery number three. Um, the first cemetery was on Douglas Street. And now where the Burger King is. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, the Burger King. And there was a huge problem with that because they put this, they basically walked away from the fort. So someone died and they went, oh, right, we got to bury people. So they walked away from the fort a good, probably half a kilometer. Mm-hmm. And they came to a huge ravine in the middle of the road or the middle of the forest, the Johnson Ravine. And they went, eh, good enough. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm dragging a dead body through the woods, if I come to a big ravine, I'm just going to bury it right there. Like, I'm not going to work too hard. That's fair. Yeah. So they decided they'd bury this guy here. And this quickly turned into the burial grounds. But the problem was, being that close to the ocean, most of the earth was clay. And so what would happen is they'd bury people. But then the bodies were slowly working themselves up. That's right. They would. And um, the local dogs and pigs were, well, it was basically a big buffet for them. Um, And it's a little upsetting when you see grandma's thigh bone running down the road (laughs) in a pig mouth. Um, So they thought, okay, well, we have to do something. This isn't working. So then they put in a new burying ground up by what's the cathedral now. Which mm-hmm. everyone thinks that's the original one, um, but it's not. It's And they actually call it Pioneer Square now, and they moved the headstones. Didn't move the bodies, just the headstones. Um, and that one was so muddy that if you could get in there to bury anybody, you were lucky. So eventually, um, Ross Bay Cemetery came into being. And um, it is located on the traditional territory of the the Kwangan people, mm-hmm. and uh, they had this land and and hunted and and gathered there for thousands of years before anybody else showed up. Uh, the Ross Bay Cemetery is a really great example of a Victorian era burial ground. Um, it's got unusual trees, plantings, carriageways, graves, in really cool marble, sandstone, and granite monuments. Also, very cool. Um, oh, what do you call them? Mausoleums. Yes. Build me a house for dead people. I'm happy. I love a good mausoleum. They're just so cool. And um, it's right by the ocean, Mm -hmm. which it it turned out was not a great thing. Do you remember that incident? Yes. In the 60s, what happened? Yeah. yeah, It it flooded. Yeah. (laughs) And how how did that go down? Oh, well, essentially the same thing happened from the original one on Johnson Street, or sorry, Government Street. They bodies rose well they didn't just rise there was a big storm Mm -hmm. and it basically the ocean is literally on the other side of the street that's right and the ocean stormed through and basically clawed out i think around 60 or 70 bodies those poor people from the ground well can you imagine you're just driving home from work and there's (laughs) you'd be like "Uh uh-oh zombies are upon us yeah no kidding um and uh yeah it was a really big problem they ended up uh having to build not only a wall on the beach side they also built a great big concrete apron that's right up into the graveyard so that if the water comes it's not going to hit the earth it's going to hit that concrete apron so it's definitely had its uh own little things 
lots of famous people are buried there. And the cool part is when they're buried there, you can go visit them. There's no lineup. There's no fees. Um, you know where they're going to be. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so for us, uh, there's a lot of famous Canadian and Americans there, including Sir James Douglas. He was BC's first governor. Mm -hmm. um, lots of premiers to pop your spot for those high ranking politicians. Cole Baron, Robert Dunsmere. He built uh, Craig Derrick Castle, which you can come and see here in Victoria. Another haunted building i'm sure we'll do an episode on my favorite sir matthew bailey begbie the, the hanging judge exactly he's emily, more fun than anyone he was and he's still hanging out at the courthouse as we talked about uh emily carr uh, world famous artist and, of course. And, and slightly crazy she used to um walk around with what two monkeys or a monkey well she had a monkey in a baby carriage his name yeah. was Wu. Wu, and she'd walk around with a baby carriage and she was at this point kind of a stately old lady and she'd have the blanket pulled up and she'd wait for some old lady to come along and go, oh, can I see the baby? And she'd be like, of course you can. And the person would reach into the thing and pull the blanket down. And she'd trained Wu. So the person would pull the blanket down to see the baby. And Wu would scream at whoever did it. And Emily thought this was the funniest thing in the world, which it kind of is. Um, that is pretty funny. Yeah. But she was pretty bats. She was pretty nuts. Um Billy Barker, he was the guy who discovered gold at Barkerville. Yeah. Up north. Another great haunted location. Yeah, Barkerville, sir. Yep. Is. And uh, Nellie Cashman, the miner's angel who was featured on a U.S. postage stamp. Um, lots of very cool uh, places and people and all these different things. Um, it's just a really neat, neat place. Uh, there's even some specific sections for for different groups different religions um and yeah it's a really neat place and if you want the old cemetery society does do a tour so you can actually go there and check it out and see you know whatever else is going on there um we also have in ross bay the other distinction was that it was basically given um it was opened in 1872 um because isabella ross was the first independent woman landowner in bc uh and she was pretty extraordinary she was um indigenous and and uh, a metis woman and uh her son was buried in the cemetery in 1876. And I think I mentioned that in the story time. Mm -hmm. His grave marker is the only known original marker left. Um, the original wooden marker is still used as a model for heritage markers. So when they're trying to recreate old cemeteries, they use his original wooden marker, which is kind of cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And then she was buried after her son in 1885. So... They had to set up, we talked about the seawall in 1911 because of the erosion that started. Mm -hmm. um, it happened again in the 30s. It happened again in the 60s. And uh, yeah, it was it was kind of an awkward thing, but I, I think they got it covered now. So that's a good thing. I think it's fair that the ocean will always win. The ocean will always win. We have talked in the past about nature mm -hmm. and us in our arrogance thinking we have it conquered. Yeah, no. No, we don't. We see that with highways just washing out in BC and... Oh, yeah. Just last year. Yeah. Climate yeah. change. Yeah. All and I think it's going to get worse, honestly. We live at the top of a hill, so we assume one day we'll just be waterfront. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Galloping Goose is now a little lane. We'll have to invest in a boat or something. Probably, yeah. Um, they also have... Uh, just it, the cool thing about the cemeteries it's so different in styles you can almost see the different ways of burying people over the years the eras of, of different ways and different styles what's um, on vogue yeah exactly mm -hmm. what's totally what's on vogue at the time um they have mausoleums like i said which are awesome i talk about that in story time because there's one famous one where somebody keeps trying to get into the mausoleum mm -hmm. who when he died he was left out because he was well a degenerate basically um and uh it's a pretty neat cemetery i have gone there uh i was at the pub across the street with some friends from work and we were like hey we should we should go in the cemetery which is officially closed by the way at night but it was nighttime there's no lights in there mm -hmm. so we all got all brave and we walked into the cemetery we got maybe 60 feet and we were like uh, we should go. Mm -hmm. It was not a friendly place to be. It felt very, very 
Yeah, it's very, it's it can be very unsettled. Yeah, that's why I've never. You asked me if I've been there. I, I've only been there a handful of times. I just, I don't know. It's the first one I feel kind of semi uncomfortable around. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And the different sections all have a very different feeling. Yes, they do. Um, it's pretty interesting. So. The city in the 1930s began planting a large number of trees. And um, so originally the cemetery was just barren ground and now it's quite filled in. Um, Now, this is interesting. Although the Ross Bay Cemetery has long been considered full, the city of Victoria discovered approximately 270 unused plots in the late 1990s. So they had a lottery. (laughs) And they sold seven of these plots in April 2004 and an additional 65 plots in February 2007. And the money raised was to refurbish um, Ross Bay Cemetery. So that's kind of cool. That is cool. Yeah. I don't know that I need to be in there, but um, you know, no, 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 that's all good. The other person who I love who's buried there is one of the most interesting political people. His name was John Smith originally. And he changed it to Amour de Cosmos, <laughs> lover of the universe. Uh, he was with us from 1825 to 1897. And believe it or not, this wack, wacky guy became the premier. <laughs> he did, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's one of the guys who's buried there. And I think that's so funny. James Dunsmere, he's the guy who built Hatley Castle. Yes, that's right. And mm-hmm. he was also a premier of British Columbia for a while. So, you know, if you wanted to be a premier, just build a castle. Um, and, uh, also somebody who we might actually, uh, maybe need to be aware of William Henry McNeil, um, was buried up there and Port McNeil is named after him, which is very close to, uh, Port Alice. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool things. The story time has a lot of talk about the different spirits who are there. Um, some in more detail than others. Very interesting to note, and again, this comes up in the in the uh, story time that uh, Isabella Ross, when she died, her home was turned into oh yeah, an insane asylum, insane asylum, it? which is what you called them in the old days. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm you know, not trying to be all also known as a funny farm and all yeah. the rest of it. I- <laughs> Now, we would call them mental health facilities, but that is not what they called them at the time. Uh, It was known as the, you know, Ross Insane Asylum. And one of the ghosts that um, someone in the story mentioned, um, she is a psychic medium. And she ran into a former patient from the Insane Asylum. So that's kind of interesting. So enjoy the stories. Uh, We will be back afterwards and uh, we'll be here to kind of debrief on them and and, uh, see what you think. So have fun and story time. Enjoy. Ross Bay Cemetery. The third graveyard to be built in the Victoria area opened in 1873. It's on 27.5 acres adjacent to the ocean and was named after Isabella Ross, who donated the land for the cemetery. Isabella was a Métis woman and the first independent female landowner in British Columbia. Isabella's son was buried there in 1876 and her grave is across the path from his. She was buried in 1885. Graveyards are not generally full of spirits because most spirits choose to remain with their families or at the homes they lived in when they were alive. Ross Bay seems to be an exception. I've certainly felt energy there when I've gone there. Once I started doing some research, I found I wasn't the only one. One man, a former groundskeeper at the cemetery, had a long and involved conversation with another man who said he was a former groundskeeper at the cemetery himself. They discussed technical aspects of groundskeeping. The former employee seemed quite knowledgeable and even gave the current groundskeeper some excellent tips on maintenance that hadn't occurred to him. It wasn't until a few days later when the groundskeeper mentioned his conversation to a colleague that he learned the man had died on the job several years earlier. A lady in black has been seen in the cemetery lingering over a child's grave. People see her walking around, but when they look back, she's gone. The cemetery is flat, 
and the only thing obstructing views of the trees, but they're not big enough to allow a person to disappear. The lady in black is not the only person to have been seen wandering around before vanishing. This is a fairly common occurrence at the Ross Bay Cemetery. Troy Reed, the same Troy Reed who saw First Nations construction worker spirit at the Empress, had an experience in the graveyard he won't soon forget. One night he was walking through the cemetery when he came to a mausoleum that wasn't actually there. The graveyard is officially closed at night to deter vandalism, so perhaps the spirits become more protective after dark. Troy certainly felt this. At the same time he was seeing the phantom mausoleum, he was also overcome by a female spirit that stopped him in his tracks. It was so powerful, he couldn't breathe. Troy was eventually able to tear himself away and got out of the cemetery as fast as he could. Ross Bay Cemetery became the final home for many of British Columbia's most elite and influential citizens. There are a number of mausoleums in the graveyard that reflect the wealth and stature of those within. The Dunsmere Mausoleum has a substantial energy, as does the Mackenzie Mausoleum. The energy near the Dunsmere Mausoleum is significant and understandable. Robert Dunsmere was one of the wealthiest men in British Columbia because he struck it rich in the coal industry. Robert Robert and his family were the power people of British Columbia for many years, and they were used to having people do what they asked. They also left their mark on the city. Robert left behind Craig Derrick Castle, and his son built Hatley Castle. People looking to do ghost investigations at the mausoleum have found that their cameras will malfunction when they attempt to take any kind of picture. Blank screens and shadowed pictures are all that come out. But once you move away from the mausoleum, everything returns to normal. The Dunsmeres were a pretty stubborn bunch, so I'm not surprised they seem to still be trying to control things from beyond the grave. The Mackenzie family established their final resting place so the whole family could be together. But one son, who chose to gamble and drink his life away, was disinherited, and when he died was refused entry into the family crypt. It seems he hasn't stopped trying to get in. On stormy nights, people would see a shadowy figure slip into the mausoleum itself. This site became so well known that the family, fearing someone was living in the mausoleum, had an iron gate installed on the crypt to keep anyone out. However, the darkened figure is still seen seeking shelter inside the mausoleum today. Don Kirkham had a rather startling experience at the cemetery. While never having gone to the cemetery to do an investigation, she was there one afternoon helping out on a cemetery tour, which was a fundraiser for the upkeep and restoration of the cemetery. She said she was accosted by two spirits. One was the spirit of the son of a famous Victoria spiritualist named James, who died in the war. Though he was killed in Europe, his spirit returned to the only grave marker he ever knew, the one in Ross Bay Cemetery. The other spirit was a bit more disturbing. It was an older woman who was clearly insane. This woman was wearing a dirty white nightgown. She had long nails, filthy hands and feet, and wild gray hair. The woman kept yelling in Don's face. She alternated between high-pitched laughing and sobbing. It's interesting to note that at this point in the tour, the group was very close to the original home of Isabella Ross. After her death, her house had been used as an insane asylum. The woman, thankfully, did not follow Dawn around but stayed where she was, so Dawn was able to move away from her. Andrew Murpa, a local ghost hunter, also had some interesting things happen to him in the cemetery. One time, he was attempting to do a paranormal investigation when he saw some glowing orbs in a monkey puzzle tree. He also started to hear church bells. While this was puzzling enough, crows then began to circle overhead. Andrew looked around and realized he was standing next to the grave of David Fee, a man who was murdered on Christmas Eve when he was leaving the cathedral after Mass. David has also been reported as showing up as a white mist to startled walkers and visitors to the cemetery. Other things to look for in the cemetery include the ghost of Isabella Ross herself, looking out to sea with a sad, downcast look on her face. Something else seems to linger near the largest angel in the graveyard. An older couple, dressed in full Victorian finery, are said to glide through the western part of the graveyard from time to time. No matter where you go in this graveyard, there's a chance you will encounter something, be it fascinating and peaceful, or disturbing and anxiety-inducing.
All right. So what did you think of those stories? I really enjoyed them. What do you think? <laughs> um, well, you're the one that basically did them. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. Um, we talked about a guy in the stories named Troy. And Troy said he was part of a group that did some interesting things there. But he didn't want to get into details because he didn't want them coming back at him. Yeah. I, plausible deniability. That well, seems to be not just that. He was actually scared. Yeah, that of makes the sense. people who had, who had done these things. Poor guy. The other thing about the um, Ross Bay Cemetery, and I had forgotten this, and I can't believe it, because this was a huge part of my growing up years, um, being in the deep, deep Christian faith, um, fundamental Christian faith, was a book called Michelle Remembers. Oh, and, yeah. And if you talk to any... I rem- remember Michelle Remembers. Yeah. And if you talk to any evangelical Christians, I remember when I was coming to move out here about 22 years ago, I actually had some Christian friends say to me, why would you move there? It's the Satanist capital of Canada. It's the witch capital of Can- witchcraft capital of Canada. I'm like, well, what? That makes it more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was their point. No, um, I know that's true, but but the basis of this is is this book because mm-hmm. it really triggered off the satanic panic in the 1980s, and that was a huge. I was born in '72, and we were part of the church by '77, so this was right in that time when things got really crazy. So it was. Uh, it's now been discredited. Um, and basically Michelle remembers, um, is a book that chronicles therapy sessions between this woman's psychiatrist, Pazder and Smith, which was her name, um, and alleged recovered memories of satanic rituals. She claims she was forced to attend. Pazder stated that Smith was abused by the quote, church of Satan and quote, purposely, purposely, a whole worldwide organization predating the Christian church. The first alleged ritual attended by Smith occurred in 1954 when she was five years old with the final one on an 81 day ritual in 1955 that supposedly summoned Satan himself (laughs) as you do uh, and involved the intervention of Jesus, the Virgin Mary and Michael, the archangel who removed the scars received by Smith throughout the years of abuse and blocked memories of events until, quote, the time was right. The book claims that during the rites, Smith was allegedly tortured, locked in cages, sexually assaulted, forced to participate in various rituals, and witnessed several human sacrifices, and was rubbed with blood and body parts of various sacrificed infants and adults. After Smith had seemingly recovered her memories, she and Pastor consulted with various church authorities, eventually traveling to the Vatican. They took this a long way. Um, the book came out and had a huge, it was just a huge, huge hit. Um, it hit people magazine, uh, and the national Enquirer during 1980s pastor and Smith toured. Oh, I should mention they eventually got married. The two of them. Oh, cause that's uh, ethical. Yeah. Yeah. That's ethical. Oh, but it also hit McLean's too. Hit McLean. Oh no. It became very mainstream. Um, they toured the U S to promote the book. It was a massive, massive success. The book earned Pazda and Smith a $100,000 hardcover advance and $242,000 for the paperback rights. That's pretty good in the 80s. In the 80s, absolutely. They got royalties and a potential movie deal. In 1989, almost 10 years after the publication of Michelle Remembers, Oprah Winfrey featured Smith as a guest on her show alongside Laurel Rose Wilson, author of the memoir Satan's Underground, which was published using the pseudonym Lauren Stratford. Both women's experiences were presented by Whit- Winfrey as incontributable. Incon- I can't say that word. Inco- What's that word? Incontributable fact. I'm not saying it right. I can't get it. Incontrovertible. Thank you. Incontrovertible fact. And not once did Oprah question the authenticity of any claim in either book. Well, why would you? Seriously. Because, yeah. I, that's... Um... Hmm. So here's the fallout. It's pretty far fetched. It I mean, got. It's pretty. Yeah. I mean, the claims are pretty shocking. Mm, Satan, you know, I've I've heard of some, some you know Hollywood actors, actresses, musicians being approached by Satan, and and now they're stars. Yeah. But essentially, they have to work forever, right? I, yeah. I think that was part of that pack. It's part of the whole thing. So I mean, 
when you con- when you consider that, I mean, I can't think of offhand some of the names. That no, well, they're all. It doesn't know, matter. No. But anyways, that's it, been going on for hundreds of years, where it, people look at successful people and go, "Oh, well, you know why." Because they made a pact with the devil. That's that's been going on for hundreds of years. That's fair. Yeah, but you, you know, this is a this, this is was a different spin case. on it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's fair. So here's what went down. So first of all, the book comes out huge, 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 huge um, thing. Um, they say that it's got all its source materials. The th- tapes from therapy were scrutinized, but as soon as things start coming up, um, Pastor withdrew his assertion that it was the Church of Satan that had abused Smith. Um, and because basically the church of Satan started to threaten to sue for libel because they made it up. Um, in October 27th, 1980, Paul Gresco interviewed Smith's father, Jack Proby, who denied the allegations against Smith's mother, who conveniently died in 1964, by the way. Wow. Of course. Um, He claimed he could refute all the allegations in the book. Um, McLean's also noted that the book failed to make any mention of Smith's two sisters, Cheryl and Tersha. Or that Pazler and Smith, both Catholics, had divorced their spouses and married each other. Hmm, that's convenient. Not okay in the Catholic Church, I can no, tell you that. No, that's true, especially in the Catholic Church. Yeah. The book also fails to mention any police investigations or any attempt that Pazler made to involve the police in verifying any of the book's accusations. Mm-hmm. Um, the authors of a 1995 book found no newspaper record of the car crash that the book describes in the time frame described, despite the fact that the local newspaper reported on all vehicle accidents at the time. Then, former neighbors, teachers, and friends were interviewed, and yearbooks from Smith's elementary school were reviewed and found no indication of Smith being absent from school or missing for lengthy periods of time. Remember, she's supposed to be in that 81-day nonstop ceremony. Well, now you can just Snapchat and Google yeah. and Instagram. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, this would have required a lot more investigation, but now you can just be like, oh, what's this? And, and there it is. Ultimately, the book's authors were unable to find anyone who knew Smith during the 50s who could corroborate any of the details in her, in her allegations. Basically, the book was um, only based on these two cooking it up for profit essentially um it was profit debunked. driven book yeah <laughs> what wow i don't know like victoria's most haunted what they should have responded into a novel of you know what? I, well i should have made the stories a lot more sexy in victoria's most haunted if i wanted to sell it just for money that's fair you know maybe but I, humping just... ghosts or sexually yeah. <laughs> sexually active ghosts who, yeah i don't know ghostly sex in the city sort of thing i don't know <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> you should see the sexy ghosts who hang out at the Empress Bar. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't know, but yeah, if they if they spun this as maybe a uh, not um, or a fiction novel, it would have done quite well. Yep, but they did not, uh, and, and and that would have been the way to get around the libel. Mm. Do what do they call them? Fictionalized novels or whatever, like they based on yeah, true based events, on truth, you know, based uh, you know whatever that means. Basically, um, in the end, uh, it's over with. Uh, they they debunked the book. It was all fake. And the sad part is that Victoria, not I won't say it hurt it like in a in a big sense, but along in the world of sort of conservative Christians, Victoria took a big hit. Yeah, they now true. saw it as somewhere that was evil and bad and this nest of witchcraft vipers or whatever. Um, but this all allegedly took place at Ross Bay Cemetery. Now, saying that, I have heard from other people who did not want to go on record or talk about who they were, that there have been some odd rituals that have taken place there. So That wouldn't surprise me. No. Um, but this kind of Michelle remembers crap was not true. The sad part is you run into Victoria people and they're like, oh, Michelle remembers. I believe every word. Oh, it's like, fair. Yeah. okay, but it's been deep. You know what? That's okay. You know, you believe what you want to believe. Yeah, it's true. Ultimately, people are going to do that anyway, right? So it's all good. I don't care. Do what you want. <laughs> While you were discussing that, I was thinking of the Mayans. Mm. And their ritual sacrifices. And mm-hmm. I'm sitting here thinking, wow, is this that? But I think was they pulled it? a lot of that kind of stuff. But that wasn't for satanic rit- um, rituals. It was, there was superstition, naturally, in the Mayans. But, yeah, you know, I, well, it is what it is. But when you were, you were discussing that, that's what I was envisioning. I'm sitting there thinking, you know, the Mayans and what they used to do. 
Yeah, no. Right. No. Rituals were a real thing. Absolutely. 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 Um, and, and I'm not saying that it wasn't. I'm just saying in this case, eh. Yeah. Eh. Well, it was debunked. Yeah, totally. Um, so, yeah, I think you can get a lot out of going to cemeteries personally. Mm-hmm. I find if I have a big decision to make, I will go to a cemetery and walk around and go, oh, yeah, right. All of these people have the same concerns and worries and anxieties and everything else. And ultimately, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't matter day, because we... we are here for this brief flash and then we're gone. And I think if you take it all too seriously, it's not you're just not going to enjoy the ride. That's so, exactly it. Yeah. yeah, I've met far too many people that are far too serious. And the reality is it is it is in the blink of an eye. It's a blink of an eye. So I find going to cemeteries very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Focusing. Very yeah, focusing. Yeah, some of my friends are like, I'm busy, 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 busy. I'm busy too. We're all busy. And yeah. one of my friends is like, how do you find time to, to visit? And I said, when it's important, you make time. Exactly. Right? I mean... I've got a million things on the go. And yeah. realistically, you know, at some point you do have to pause, right? You do, you do. And I just, you know, I spent the whole week working on the audiobook for Vancouver's Most Haunted yeah, you and you know, job. lots of yeah, I'm hope I'm hoping it's gonna be up and up and out there soon. But I mean, we both have so much stuff going on and yet we still find time for each other. We still find time to go do fun stuff. We yeah, still find time friends, to do and Yeah, yeah we're absolutely a barbecue today is so we are indeed. We are oh, indeed. and that's a good time to, t- to plug <gasps> Oh, our new partnership. Yeah. Oh, we want to announce our new partnership. We, um, You may have heard on previous episodes, um, our friend Evan, who is also a supporter of the show. Thank you, Evan. Yes, thank you, Evan. Um, Evan and Carlene were on our uh, mm. My Haunted House That's uh, episode. Right. They talked about their house. Yeah. Evan is so big into uh, clothes for dogs. Dog fashion. Dog fashion. We're, we're thinking about dog fashion week. Oh, I like that. We'll have to. Fashion we'll have week. to explore that fashion week. Pooch week. We need. We need to. We need to find a big sponsor. Well, I think Evan will do it because uh, this is exciting. We're announcing our partnership with Evan. Our first <laughs> commercial sponsor because Evan is launching a line of. Um, clothes for dogs. What's this company called? Prills Prissy Puppies. It's amazing. I I hear he's going to specialize in sparkly capes. I think that's going to be. I know, amazing. So we're really excited for that, Evan. We we can hardly wait. And I know once our dog gets shaved today, which he is getting shaved, um, I'm actually going to say to them, you can't cut him too short. Like, I want every piece of fur off his dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the burball ring, right? <laughs> um, but I think he'll really appreciate all the beautiful clothes that Evan has uh, available. So listen for that. We'll probably be uh, talking more about that in the future. And otherwise, you know, Evan, thanks for all you do for all the dogs, keeping them looking hot and fresh and, <laughs> and in style. Prills, uh, prissy puppies. Prills, prissy puppies. You know, Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Everyone loves dog fashion. Everyone loves dog fashion. It's an important part of our culture, really. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they they rarely change in size, so you can just... <laughs> That's a great point! You know? You can invest in dog fashion because they stay the same size. That's right. Unlike kids who change every other week. That's right. I love it. I love it. It only takes two years and then, boom, they're their size. Yeah. No, you're, you're bang on right with that. I'm hoping he expands his line so it's not just little dogs who can dress up. I'd like to see fashion. some big, oh, an 80s line on oh, for that. Can you put platform shoes on a dog? Like some kind of disc? L.A. Thing? gear feet. <laughs> L.A. <laughs> Mondetta. Do you remember Mondetta? Oh, yeah, Mondetta. Yeah. And what was the other one? Uh, it, okay. For the back. Quest, gas. What was the club one? Um, Oh, Club Monaco. Club Monaco. Um, But even before that, there was another one. I'm trying to remember. You got Kookaburra. What was that? Jackets. And they were Club something. Oh, Oh. I can't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. No, there's been so They come and go. Starter. Starter. That was a big. A line of athletic wear for dogs. Yes. Evan. Get Chicago on Bulls. Get on it. Bulls for dogs. <laughs> Get on it, Evan. We need to see this happen. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys uh, so much. Um, I hope you enjoyed our cemetery thing. Uh, we do like cemeteries. There's some other cemeteries here in town. And uh, 
we have one that's really great and it even has um oh what do you call it a uh a mausoleum with that's right with n- niches niches whatever you want to call them and uh we, i painted that mausoleum you painted the um crematorium yeah yeah well yeah there's yeah the crematorium but there's what uh yeah no sorry i keep saying the mausoleum but yeah no 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 worries no worries that was what was the name of that place royal oak yes and yeah i i found peace at royal oak um yeah i i I found it fascinating when I was working there because it just, hmm, it seemed peaceful but unsettled as well. Mm. I, that's why I don't. I'm not a huge fan of cemeteries. Like yeah, we went to that one that was out. You know, we went to that one in L.A. What was that one? Hollywood Forever. Oh uh, yeah, where that Marilyn, was. Whoo. Oh yes, where uh, Marilyn Monroe was yeah. buried. Yeah, 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 yeah. That oh, one was that, interesting. And that great story about the man who bought. This is kind of gross. He bought the. Um, the burial niche over Marilyn Monroe. Correct. And, and when he, he died, he, he wanted to be buried face facing her. <laughs> That's face so down. creepy. That is bizarre. Even in death, the man's a perv. Nice, oh. nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, just no, no. Well, it's my understanding she was moved. Yeah, yeah. well, I would be too if I had a creepy neighbor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we want to thank everyone for supporting us. You know, you have a big decision coming up. Head out to your local cemetery. You will find perspective. I guarantee it. And also, you can really be thankful for where you are. I saw so many headstones where people had died in their 20s and 30s. And or we children. complain about getting old. Getting old is a privilege. It is a privilege. So... Keep that in mind, too. Yeah, we, we've seen some children. The, I think the most peaceful one is the one that was out in Port Renfrew. Oh, that one's amazing. That the one First Nations one. definitely <gasps> the most peaceful wow. one. It's, and the, it's the first one I've ever been to where it feels... Perfectly peaceful. Yes, perfectly peaceful. It's That's well said. It's in a rainforest. Everything is covered in moss. And you hear the ocean waves. You hear the waves coming in, but the light is just this different quality. It's very green. It's stunning. We should go out there and take some pictures so yes. people can see what we're talking about. Because yeah. it's not the kind of place you're going to find on Google Maps. No, it isn't. No. But so, it's stunning. Yeah. And it's the first one I actually genuinely feel peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, would I want to camp there? Eh, maybe not. Um, so we want to thank all of our lovely, lovely patrons. Yes. Um, we've had a couple new ones in the last little while, and we're grateful for thank them. Thank you very much. Uh, and I want to do a little bit of a shout out to one of our new patrons, Bryce. Mm-hmm. Because Bryce was, I have been putting off doing the audiobook. I have been mentally blocked on this, thinking I can't do it. It's too hard. I don't know what I'm doing. And Bryce sent me a message and said, I love audiobooks. I'm really hoping you're going to do Vancouver's Most Haunted soon because I would really like to listen to it. And uh, it would mean a lot to me. And I'm like, now I got to do it. And that worked. It it did did work. I literally started that night, which is very similar to how I ended up doing this podcast. Do you Mm -hmm. remember? Yeah. I got my butt kicked by the publicist at my... um, publishing company and we started it that night yeah so yeah it works um but bryce thank you very much because of you i sat down and i powered through this flipping book um over the course of a week i did about three or four chapters a night i learned how to get things right for audible there's a very set parameters that they expect yeah it's very concise very concise and now i'm actually kind of enjoying the process because i know how to do it so Thank you. Congratulations I'm, to you. Thank you, sweetie. Also, I um, have auditioned to do some other books. Fabulous. Yeah. So, hey, make that money. Make that money. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But, yeah. So, Bryce, thank you very much because you gave me the push I needed and I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to thank our patrons. Uh, please consider, if you would like to support us um, on Patreon, it's just uh, Ghosts N Bears um, at Patreon.com. We'd be very grateful for any level you can provide support for. Um, We love all of our listeners. We're very grateful to you. If you don't want to do the Patreon thing, please uh, tell your friend about the about the podcast or share it on Facebook or do a five star review. Not four, not three, five. Uh, Five star review on uh, iTunes. We'd be super grateful for that. Let us know what we can do better. 
Yeah, what maybe not in the review, uh, but send us, yeah, send send us, us a message. Us. We'd love to hear it. We're on um, we're on uh, Facebook. We've got a page. We're on Instagram. Uh, and you can always use good old-fashioned email, ghostsnbears at gmail.com. That's right. And we're ghosts and bears everywhere else. And also there's our website, ghostsandbears.com. So um, feel free to reach out. We'd love to hear from you. We mm. always love to hear from our listeners. Also, I want to thank people for sending stories. Taya sent us a great story. Yeah, we're going to have on our... It's going to be fun. Yeah, we're going to have that on our um, patron-only show, Ghost listeners, Stories We Have Heard. Listener yeah. stories. Yeah, yeah that'll yeah. be fun. So thanks for that, you guys. Um, we just want to take a minute and, uh, and uh, say thank you to our patrons. Adam. Bryce. Sherry. Brooks. Marion. Kathleen. Alexa. Debbie. Jackie, Charlotte, Ruth, Rebecca, Mary Frances, Cassie, Gina and Victoria, Sandy, Christopher, David, Ashley, Jeremiah, Elizabeth, BB Nix, Melinda, Jordan, Tammy, James, Taya, Evan of Prills, Prills Prissy, Prissy Puppies. Puppies, yeah, Arwen, Steve, Kyle and Charlotte, Catherine, Myrie. Yes, and uh, it's Steve's birthday today, by oh, the way. We're recording birthday. this on a Sunday, and it's Steve's birthday. So happy birthday, Steve. Happy birthday, Steve. Thanks again, you guys. Thank you for all of the kind things you send to us and the beautiful words you offer. We are so grateful because, honestly, sometimes it feels overwhelming to do this all the time, and we are so, so, so grateful that you're out there and being um, supportive and encouraging and all the rest because it literally is what keeps us going. That's right. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So next time you're out there and you're thinking about podcasts keep in mind we're the only podcast that gives you the actual ghost story with the actual history in the actual place and hopefully one day soon that place will be with you take care friends take care bye 